Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey, guys. Guess what? It's me. I'm back. It's Cammy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Cammy. You guys so much. Hi, Elizabeth. So this is my first recording back um, from quote unquote maternity leave or whatever. I'm still basically on maternity leave. Who even knows at this point? But I'm so excited to talk to you guys. And we're just going to be talking about my birth story and what life has been like with baby Mia and all those fun changes. And I'm probably going to cry. Just going to say that now. <laughs> I'm like about I'm ready. to cry. Oh, I'm just excited to talk to you guys, and I'm just so happy and excited to podcast again with Elizabeth. And I'm just, Aww. I'm just a ball of emotions. So don't mind me; it's fine. <laughs> I know I missed you. It's like crazy actually hearing your voice on the other end again. So it's I really know. exciting. I was like, oh my lord, hearing my voice come through a microphone is just like weird now. So, um, <laughs> so it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. So yeah, this is like our little little segue in before we get into like all the hard business questions and everything just so I can talk about everything that's going on with me. So welcome to my life, everybody. (laughs) Yes. We literally are calling this like the Q and cake baby Mia rendition essentially (laughs) because it is all questions today about what Cammie has been up to with baby Mia. And Cammie just told me she has an awesome episode idea for later for y'all too where we're gonna do a whole like maternity leave planning strategy session but (laughs) that's gonna have to be separate from all of these questions because otherwise we would be here for like two hours yes exactly so we'll do that separately just like some practical tips um now that i'm like kind of on the other end of it i feel like looking back there was like stuff that i realized that i did that would be helpful so we can share those for you guys too Yes. And we've had, uh, there's been like a couple guests in the past that have talked about that, but it'll be so great to have like the insight directly through Cammie's firsthand experience since she is half of Biz Birthday Bash. And there's just going to be a lot to learn from so many things. So, okay, Cammie, I know you're going to (laughs) cry. Oh, crap. I am going to cry. (laughs) Because the first question, just talking about like the birth story, there's like so many emotions. So, oh my gosh. Yes. And you haven't like formally really. Like, there's been snippets here and there, I think, on Instagram, but you haven't formally put anything out there with, like, the story, like, the scope of the story. So, tell us about the birth story, like, your expectations, hopes, changes, all of the things. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't shared about my birth story because, honestly, it was, like, a very personal thing to me. Oh, crap. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. It's okay. So, <laughs> like, prepping for birth, like, I would, I'm a huge advocate for natural birth. Like, I wanted my birth to be, like, a home birth, like, a water birth, like, in my living room, no epidural, no meds, like, very natural all the way. And, like, that was what I was kind of prepping for. Um, but then Alex got a little nervous that we were going to be at home, and he's like, what if something goes wrong? So we were planning on going to the hospital. I ended up switching providers because I was, like, looking all over for a hospital that would support like the natural birth mindset and me having a doula come in, being able to labor in a tub was really important to me. And so, um, yeah, sorry guys, this is going to be like very birthy. So I'm, I'm ready. Oh, I am so here for it. it. Um, yeah. So but that's yeah. a good disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, disclaimer. If you're not interested in this kind of stuff, then this is not the episode for you. Um, yeah. but I could talk about this all day. Like I read all the things, listen to all the things. Like I just, and I am amazed at like, how like prepared women's bodies are for birth. And it's just, it's just incredible. Like the whole process of being pregnant and everything is just like amazing. Like every day it feels like a miracle. You're just like, what? This is crazy. Like all the time. It is so cool. And I I truly enjoy like every second of it. And so I was like so gung-ho about my birth. Like I was like, this is like a marathon to me. I'm prepping for like the biggest workout of my life. Like I can't wait for this. Um, I can't wait to like give my baby like the best thing ever. Like I want to be able to just like grab her immediately, like all this stuff. So that was where my mind was with my birth and like going up through pregnancy, we had like no issues, no complications at all. And it was just like, like truly a dream pregnancy. Like I never got sick, felt great. Every time I went to the doctor, it was just like, you're good. You're good. I'm like, okay. Well, Which is, is so 
like lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I had, so I, feel like I had a very good pregnancy. Um, I was just tired. Like I would just get tired and like pass out of my chair, but other than that, I was fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I truly didn't feel super, super pregnant until like 32 or 34 weeks when I was just like, you know, getting big. And I was like, wow. I am pregnant now. <laughs> yeah. Like, Let me tell you all, Cammie yeah. was not acting like she was pregnant when she had her sip and shop event. She was like out there standing up and on bench drinking lights. And I was like, excuse me, lady. <laughs> please get like, down. I'm like, I up should the be tent. up there like hanging up the lights. Cammie's like putting the tents up, like pulling tables around. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> this is happening. Yeah. We, power, we powered through. Like, I mean, really, I felt really good. Um, so anyway, so all that is like very important to understand like my birth story um, because I, let's see, around, oh, I guess around 34. Four, 35 weeks, they were like, oh, well, it's looking like she's like measuring kind of small, like on the percentage scale, like her abdomen is in like the 2% scale, which is like out of 100 babies, she would be like the second smallest is basically what that means. So her abdomen's really small, but her head's like measuring like normal size. So she might just be like really skinny and like that's a problem because it could be that, that she's not getting enough nutrients from the placenta. So now you're labeled as a high risk pregnancy. And if you're high risk, they're like, not as on board with you doing natural birth. And it's like all these interventions can start coming in. And I like, that's exactly what I did not want. And I'm like, well, is there a chance that this could be wrong? Like, is it, she's just a small baby. Like she's fine. Like, they're like, yeah, that's totally a possibility. But on the other hand, it could be like fetal growth restriction and all these like scary words they were tossing around. So it was like literally sunshine and rainbows until like the last four, like, four weeks. And we were just like, oh my gosh, like we're high risk, high risk. Like that is a scary word. You don't want to hear that Mm -hmm. when you're pregnant. And so um, with my um, provider I was with, there's like a midwife side and also like, like an OB side, um, which is like the surgery side basically. And then like the midwife's more like a natural minded. And so they're like, oh, you need to start meeting with our other side, like the other doctors, because moving forward, like it's not looking like you're going to be able to do it like this. We're probably going to take her out early. And It was just like a huge switch with like no lead up to it. And it was like so scary for me. I was so mad at myself. I mean, it's not like you can do anything, but I was like very mad. I'm like, why are these things going wrong? But turned out nothing was really wrong. Um, So we went in like twice a week to do non-stress tests, NSTs, so non-stress tests, which is basically where they just hook the baby up, like put your belly on a monitor and they can listen to the baby's heartbeat. And Mia's heartbeat was totally fine. Always fine. Like they're like, she's super healthy like we have no reason to believe anything's wrong it's just she's like measuring kind of small and the ultrasounds um which alex was like well you know her mother has a small waist and a big head too so and all this, <laughs> and the doctor looked at him and i was like no it's funny it's fine you can laugh <laughs> oh, um so we did all those tests everything was always fine and it just basically came down to they were like we really probably need to take her out early because she might she's not growing well she might not be growing well And so we were always like on the, you know, we had to talk to the surgeon. He's like, we're probably gonna be doing a C-section. And I remember in that appointment, I was so mad. (laughs) I was so mad. And I was also crying. And I was just like mean mugging this doctor. And I was like, I literally cannot stand this guy. (laughs) Like when we left. And he um, is the one we ended up like having to do my C-section with. (laughs) But, oh, yeah. Boom. Um, But. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I remember the phone conversation with you at that point where that was like pretty sure that was the route you were going to have to take. And that was not. No, you were not happy. <laughs> you yes. were so you were confused. There was all those conflicting emotions because of what you said of like they keep saying everything's fine, but she's like measuring a little small. So like, which one is it? I which just don't understand. Yeah. And so I had a birth doula, and so I was pretty much reaching out to her every week, and being like, okay, this is what they said. How do we proceed with this? Like, blah blah blah. And basically, the point of action was we were just planning to just like wait it out until like to see what happens. Like, if I went into labor, it'd be fine. But we had another second factor that really messed with things because my baby girl was breech, um, which if you don't know what that means, it's like she's in the wrong position. She's basically upside down to give birth. Um, her She's head up instead of head down. Um, only like 2% of babies are breech by the end of the, the tr- like the full pregnancy. So mm. Mia is just – she is an anomaly. Let me just tell you. <laughs> she's stubborn um, like her mama. I love it. She is so stubborn. So she was breech. So you cannot like – legally like give birth to a breech baby like in florida like at all like you have to like have a c-section you can't like do it um oh like, that's like written like, into the law yeah you have to like find like like you have to like go out of state or find like a, like it's very 
hard to like find someone who will deliver a breech baby. Like, wow. Um, okay. Yes. Um, because there's just a lot more complications. I mean, it's totally possible. And in, in my view, breach is just another position for birth. It's not necessarily like wrong or right, but that's just, you know, the way the cookie crumbles. Um, so let me just tell y'all the last few weeks of my pregnancy, I was doing everything I could to get this baby to flip. I don't know if you've heard of spinning babies, but I was doing that. I was laying, um, upside down on a ironing board. <laughs> <laughs> like propped up against my couch. <laughs> Alex was singing into my crotch. I had cold peas where I'd put on the top of my tummy and then sit in a hot bath to like encourage her to flip, which she would move like sideways. I could feel her like my poor baby. I tortured her at the end <laughs> like uh, to get away from the cold. I um Acupuncture. I, I remember I that acu- one. I did Chinese acupuncture, y'all. I had this little lady come to my house where I laid in my nursery and had needles poked all through me twice. And then she smoked some Chinese herbs on my pinky toe, which is like a moxa stick, and it's supposed to make the baby flip, and I don't even know what's going on. So then Alex had to smoke these Chinese herbs next to my pinky toe. Not like actually <laughs> smoke them. It's like a little stick. Like a little yes, yes. Stick. <laughs> it literally sounds crazy. Okay, look it up. It's a thing. Um, you know, praying a ton, obviously. And then the last few, um, the last week I was going to our gym pool and doing like handstands and flips in the shallow end of the pool, which is a very humbling experience to like waddle into your public pool nine months pregnant <laughs> in a bikini me. with the towels that like won't even wrap around you. <laughs> can like, we? I just remember like waddling through and the towels are like hand towels. I'm like, who put these towels in? Like I couldn't cover anything. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I a bikini. It was just like straight up my butt. So it was just like, <laughs> and I'm just flipping, like constantly flipping. <laughs> I did like everything you could do oh. think of to like get this baby to flip. Um, but yes, she never flipped. <laughs> so that came to a point where it's like, do we just keep waiting for her to possibly flip while I go into labor? But since she's smaller, then they're going to freak out at the hospital because they hate anything that's weird. So they're going to like automatically schedule you for or like go into a C-section anyway that you have labor and then a C-section, which is like doesn't sound very fun at all. So we went through like all these options and we're weighing them and – I had to kind of like come to terms like she's still breech. So even if I did, you know, kind of take the risk or not really risk, but just like do what I felt was right and waited instead of like scheduling a C-section because she was breech. It was like a super, super high chance that I was going to have a C-section anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, So we actually didn't even like schedule it. I actually got a call from the billing department at the hospital and they were like, oh, we have you down for a C-section on January 20th. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) Like my my doctor like somehow missed to call me and so the billing department had called me and that is how I found out like I had been scheduled and I was like what the heck (laughs) um but yeah at the end of it I was like you know I I just feel like I'm tired of like going back and forth and doing all these tests and like panicking and I get to meet my baby girl earlier and like let's just do it I'm like I'm let's let's just go for it it'll be okay like I'm most likely gonna have a c-section anyway and it's gonna be fine to be scheduled where I can prepare for it rather than like you know, waiting and seeing. And if something goes wrong, it would have been way scarier. So yeah. So then I was just like, had to get on board with it. And honestly, it was like a really big test of like my faith because it's like truly something you you can't control. And I just really had to like lean on God um, to give me strength because it's something I, I was like terrified of a C-section. Like a C-section Aww. and epidural were like the scariest things in my head. Like I just like, oh my gosh, it just terrifies me. Like I'm not I'm not scared of needles, but I am just scared of like doctors. I just, I don't know. I'm just a very like do it myself kind of gal. Like I was literally like, if I had to go to the hospital, I'd rather give birth in the car than give birth in the (laughs) hospital. Like I'm not kidding you. Like I was planning on just like waiting at home to like the very, very last minute. Um, And so I worked, like spoke with my doula a lot and she was so great. Like she would pray with me and just give me a lot of guidance. And she's like, this is really just your first time to realize like, that little person inside of you is like, she's her own person. She has her own personality and she's not going to like always do what you want her to do. Like she's going to do her own thing and she's her own person. And this is that first like moment of that where you realize like you have a second like little human being that is going to do her own thing. And I was like, wow, (laughs) my baby is so stubborn just like me. Um, (laughs) So I don't know. So I felt kind of come, come to terms with it, came to peace with after praying a lot And I was like, you know what? Like, this is when God decided her birthday is. Like, I was like, oh, it really sucks that God's not going to pick her birthday. Like, we're not going to know her, like, what day. But I'm like, he already did. Like, this is the day she's supposed Mm -hmm. to come, January 20th. And it's going to be great. And so that was, like, 
let's see, I found out like, I don't know, like five days before the C-section. So we were like, I oh think my God. I remember <laughs> hearing from you on the Saturday prior because the 20th yes. was a Thursday, right? Yes, Thursday. Yep. So I'm almost positive we had that talk on Saturday and you were like, I am having a baby on Thursday. <laughs> yes, I was like, I cannot think of anything else right now. I'm having a baby on Thursday. I don't even know what to do with myself. Like, it's so weird knowing when you're gonna have the baby like you you know what I'm saying like normally yes. she's like we don't know when it's gonna happen and it's fun like I I really wanted that moment but I didn't get that and I'm I'm okay with it now but it was just like so funny to be like okay I'm gonna literally meet her at this time like it's just so wild yeah. coming um, from the woman who was taking photos of herself over the the medical sheet <laughs> Because that um, did happen. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I did want the clear. I wanted to see what was going on, but I knew Alex would like literally have a heart Bang. attack if they saw that. So I was like, okay, I won't do the clear sheet just for you. But I'm like, I am morbidly curious. I want to see this, but it's fine. Uh, so, so yes. Okay. So my C section was Thursday at 1230. And I remember like calling my parents and they were like, oh, we're not going to be able to come. Like, we're going to be there a couple days after. And they were like so upset. But I know Papa G, like he's he's a crazy man. You think he's going to miss the birth of his baby granddaughter? Absolutely not. <laughs> right. So as we're walking in to go to the hospital, um, I see this little old man running across the parking lot. <laughs> and, oh, gosh. And it's Papa G. He like show, him and mom drove the night before to like meet us there at the hospital to be there before I went in. <laughs> now I'm crying. Um, so he was just like running across the parking lot and he was carrying the little baby shoes that I gave them. Um, oh, Cammy. <laughs> I know when I announced I was pregnant, you guys. <laughs> and it was so sweet. And he like, he had a little note in it with a little flower, like this little, like tiny little bouquet of like tiny little baby flowers. And it was like, I came to return these to have them filled today or something like that. I don't even remember. Oh, um, adorable. It was so sweet. So Alex and I are crying. My parents are crying. Then Alex's mom is there. We're all crying. And then I realized I forgot like an important document. So we had to send my parents to go get it. <laughs> Typical. So, um, so it was really great to see them just like gave me a lot of peace of mind before going in because I was seriously so scared. You guys, <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> And my surgeon was the guy who initially told me I was going to need a C-section. And remember I told you I hated him? Well, I knew because I hated him that he would be a great C-section doctor because he like clearly like loved them and I like hated them. So I was like, he's going to do great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right. actually I ended up really liking him at the end. He was like really funny. And I, to- I always told him, I was like, I don't like you at all. You know that, right? And he's like, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> um, but he was always very honest with me and I, I appreciated that. And we kind of had like this funny like camaraderie with us but um so he he actually was great and then let's see so in the surgery I don't know how much like detail I'm going to go into but like it's like three hours beforehand it's so weird you guys it felt like I was checking into a hotel and then I like the the details (laughs) I like like all the details yeah (laughs) okay um yeah so you basically check in like three hours before and then you're just like in prep for a really long time and you're just like what the heck is going on and just count down the minutes um, and prep looks like pretty much just laying there and people come like check your blood pressure and check your baby's heartbeat like 4,000 <laughs> times. So <laughs> just like, okay. You're like, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Great, great, great. So then um, he obviously like wheel you into the room and I got in there with the anesthesiologist and I was like, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. This is the scariest room I have ever been in in my life because it is. It looks like the inside of a spaceship. There's lights everywhere. Everything's like, it's cold. It's sterile. It's like so bright white. I was like, so I feel like I'm in a Lady Gaga music video right now. This is so scary because <laughs> it's just so insane. Um, and they were like, oh, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just like you watch Grey's Anatomy. And I was like, no, I watch shows like Dexter. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not a good. <laughs> That's not good then. Um, so you get like the spinal block, which is terrifying because I was so scared of having my legs numb. Like That just freaked me out. Yeah. So they basically numb you and you're butt naked, which is awkward. Uh, and then you just can't feel your legs anymore. So you just don't even care. You don't even know what's happening. Um, and then they put the little sheet over you and like, I don't know, I guess that took like 15 minutes. And then Alex walks in and I look like I'm like being crucified because my arms are out. And it's like, you know, you, you just can't move. You're just like, hey, you're like laying on this table. And I could see Alex was like, trying so hard not to cry because I know he was like super scared for me because <laughs> I was so scared and it was like oh gosh it was so hard and I was just trying to like keep my little happy spirit up you know and I was just like hey we get to meet our baby 
And um, no lie, the surgery took seven minutes. It was seven minutes long. And I could just feel, I didn't feel any pain. I would just feel like pressure. Like I could feel them like pushing her, like, I don't know, just like pressure. I don't know. You can like tell something's going on. And then I just hear them go, oh, I see a butt because that's always the first thing you're going to see because she was breached. So she's butt first. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. a butt? oh my gosh. And then they pull her out and I just hear her crying. And it was like, oh, it was just like the best sound ever, you guys. <laughs> Oh, Tammy. <laughs> it was just the most beautiful sound to hear her just, you know, just wailing. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I have a baby and I'm so jealous because Alex got to hold her first and I was oh. so mad. <laughs> so, so they were like across the room, like he got to cut the umbilical cord and everything. I like basically told the doctor I wanted this to be like as close to a natural birth as possible. Like I want you to wait to clamp through the cord. I want to like, you know, have her like skin to skin with Alex like immediately, like all these things. So I could hear her crying and Alex just like crying over there too. We were just so excited. And then I started getting a little lightheaded because I was like, oh my gosh, like I am feeling good. And also I am so tired. Like I kept being like, you know what? It feels so good to take a nap right now. And I kept wanting to close my eyes, but I was like, don't you freaking close your eyes. You're not going to miss this because I guess I was like losing blood. I don't know. Sorry, everyone who's like freaked out by this stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> so I was like kind of lightheaded, but I was like, don't you freaking miss this. Don't you do it. And so Alex finally like walks over and he's carrying her and he just like puts her out to my cheek. And as they're, when they're over there on the other side of the room, I'm just like crying. And I'm just like, my baby, my baby, Mia, Mia, like just yelling for her. <laughs> and it was just, it was just really sweet. So we finally all get to like be together. And it was just, it was just like truly the best feeling, like all three of us together. And then after that, Aww. I truly do not remember how we got into the other room. Like I don't remember at all. <laughs> like I definitely you like, blacked, blacked out. out at that point. <laughs> like, I'm like, how did we get into this other room? Like I was like, what I holding Mia? He was like, you were definitely not holding Mia because you would have dropped her. <laughs> like, so I guess Alex carried her into like our recovery room. Then I got to nurse her for the first time, which also made me cry because one of the things with the C-section I didn't want is because babies can have a harder time nursing, breastfeeding after that. So, but she did great. She latched right on the first time and I was, so then I cried about that because I was so happy about that. And it's just like right. such a magical moment just to like look in her face and, and see her. And she's just so cute and so sweet and just like the most precious oh, little bundle you've ever the seen. pictures of her, like little <laughs> squishy baby Mia. Uh, I just remember I like, cried when you sent them oh, to me. God, she's just like so bad. She's just the best. Um, and I had all these stupid cords on me and I remember like pulling them off and I ripped out my IV and like they were trying to put it back <laughs> in. I was like, please, I don't want this. Like I just, this is getting in the way. I can't like hold my baby. <laughs> uh, so I had like blood squirting. I don't know, guys. I was just like a mess. <laughs> I'm not a very good patient, as you can see. Um, so we were in there for a good long while and then we finally got to go to our little tiny little room. It really was like the tiniest little room, which was kind of fun. It was like a cozy little cave and just spend all the time with her. And I don't think I put her down like once. I literally held her for like the entire few days that we were in there. They were like, you better not be sleeping with that baby. And I'm like, oh, I'm not. But, yeah, right. I'm going to hold this baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it was a lot better than I expected. Like I was so scared of the surgery and what that would look like. And afterwards, it was kind of scary not being able to still feel my legs. And I worked really hard to like get my feeling back. Like I was constantly trying to move my legs. And when I finally could, I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but and the recovery, like the first day was kind of rough just because I, you know, you got cut open and I was like, holy yeah. crap, like if they take this and she's like, we're going to take the bandage off in 24 hours. I was like, are you sure? This seems like really soon. I feel like if you take this off, I'm going to literally like fall over. And die. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, you're good. So I was terrified of that, but it was, it was fine. Everything was, was totally good. And I, the hospital was, you know, the night nurses were amazing. Like we had so many amazing nurses. They were all so sweet and so wonderful and because I couldn't like stand up and change Mia or do anything, Alex did all that stuff. And he just became like the best dad. He was like clearly so proud of himself every time he did anything. And he like learned how to swaddle so good. Like we, it was just so fun. I, I just like, I love those moments. It's just like the world shuts off for like a few days and you're just in there. Like, you don't even know what time it is. We didn't watch TV or anything. We just literally stared at our baby for like 
48 hours straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was and the best. you didn't share, like, you had a full weekend, maybe like four days, I think, before you even shared on Instagram, which was awesome. Like, yeah. I would want to do the same thing, I think. Yeah. I definitely waited till we got home um, to share anything. And, like, it's so funny because I knew when I was going to have my baby <laughs> um, exactly the time. And I never shared any, any of that with anyone because I just wanted to be about us for a little bit and not – I don't know, not have the weight of the world and social media's expectations on me or anything like that, you know, or just like, I don't know, there was a couple select few people that I I talked to on Instagram and like shared with them to like to have them pray for me and stuff. And I know I had like an amazing, amazing um, like support group praying for me like all over the world, which was really cool. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we just took that time for ourselves. And it really is just like the happiest little days of your life like I just look back on all those days like with so much fondness and we took like a thousand pictures and I still feel like I don't have enough pictures so, <laughs> <laughs> so take as many as you can <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> of course I mean it was such a special moment for you guys and I was so happy when she was finally here it was like that was so crazy for me like being in a different state and like looking at my watch and being like, okay, like Cammy's in surgery now. Like, <laughs> when is she going to text me? When am I going to get photos? Is everything okay? Like what's happening? Like I, I know. Really and I didn't focus. share the, the name with you either. So <laughs> I know you were That's like waiting right, for that. You did it. I forgot. Yes. You're right. You did not share the name until she was born. Yes. Which was special. I actually really liked the surprise, even though I wanted you to tell me, I still liked being surprised. I would have too. happily told you, but this was Alex's thing. He just thought it was so fun to not tell anyone i was dying to tell people but whatever <laughs> oh i didn't realize that was his thing as much <laughs> oh it was definitely his thing as much like i was i was like calling her by her name all the time so i was like i'm gonna slip up for sure but you know because like that's who she was like i knew exactly who she was as soon as we found her a girl was, like mia brighton like we know who it is uh, so yeah <laughs> Oh, it's the perfect little name for her. I love it. Oh, yes. Mia after your grandmother. Yes, Papa G's mom um, after my grandmother. Her name was Mia. Oh, well, actually, her name is Margaret, but everyone called her Mia. And she's just an amazing lady. So she's named after her great grandma. And then um, Brighton is after our favorite ski resort. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Not so. the jewelry for anyone wondering. Not the jewelry. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going to be – her name was going to be Brighton Mia – um, because I love the name Brighton for a first name, but then I thought Mia Miller sounded really cute. So, oh, know. Mia Miller sounds so cute. I just so like cute, I right? love the sound of Mia Brighton Miller. Like Mia Brighton Miller, it, it flows like, it better flows. than Brighton <laughs> Mia Miller. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it. It does. So I was like, oh, I had to get over it. I was like, we'll just call her Brighton. But I was like, no, she's Mia. Like when I saw her, I was like, this is Mia. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very much a Mia. Okay, I feel like you definitely answered like all encompassing like a couple of the things that I had written out in terms of questions like (laughs) like your first moments and then like first week you kind of like covered that I think with like Alex doing a lot of the um yeah the behind the the scenes the swaddling you were like he's a swaddling master he's like the swaddle master (laughs) he was so proud of himself and the and then recovery once I got home like I couldn't wait to get out of the hospital and because I just wanted to get back to our house and like start our life with her. And I'm so excited to like bring her home. Like, oh my gosh, so great. And uh, oh, it was also very cold, which I was very excited about in Florida because I bought her like a thousand beanies for some reason. Because so I guess she got to wear her little beanie home and I was very excited. Yeah, because she's yeah. named after a ski resort. Exactly. Obviously. So it was like perfect because it was like 30 degrees. It was really cold in Florida <laughs> for like yep, the first time. It never ever. happens. <laughs> never happens. So. We brought her home. And then that, that first week, I was honestly like the recovery, you guys, was so easy for me. Like, I'm not kidding you. It was it was great. Like, I thought I was going to be like, which is a huge blessing because yeah. it is true with C-sections. It takes weeks. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like prepared to like literally not be able to get out of bed for like two weeks. Like I was sleeping in this like reclining chair and me as nursery because I was like, there's no way I can get into bed, like blah, blah, blah. But I was like, literally fine. Everyone's like, you need to rest. I'm like, no, I literally feel great. Like, I feel good. Like, I mean, I'm you know, I can tell I had surgery, but I don't feel like bad. Like I'm, I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thankfully I had like a really great recovery. I think I didn't have any, any crazy hangups or anything like that. I mean, I still wore my adult diapers y'all. 
best thing ever. Like I've heard that those are very comfortable. And I had to convince Will, my husband, that those were a thing that women, in fact, wear adult diapers after having a baby. Yes, you do. He was like, no, 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 no. He's like, I don't think so. You pee your pants. There's just a lot going on. Yes, exactly. Because you're that was something that I learned from you that I did not know that like even if you have a C-section, your body is still getting rid of things the normal way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not quite as much as natural birth because <laughs> they vacuum you out. TMI. Um, so, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and you li- hear it, and it's the worst sound ever. But oh my other god, than that, I know. Sorry, this guy, this episode's gonna be like a disclaimer. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, like I'm warning. But really, like it's not rapid. bad. Okay? <laughs> really was fine. Um, but you're just kind of like a mess after like the first week. I just like lived in a robe and like my diapers and. I don't know. It's great because everyone's bringing you food and I just held my baby all the time. I was like, this is so fun. Like, I'm having the best time ever. <laughs> oh, So, okay. So that was like, where were we? I did all remember my recovery. All good. Oh, gosh, you guys. And then like, let me just tell you about the first night because I think this is kind of funny. Like, the f- babies make so much noise when they're sleeping. Like, you don't even realize. It's like, Mia is like literally like a little baby T-Rex. She's just like, all the time. And I didn't realize they made all those noises when they were sleeping. So the first night, like every time she made a noise, I'd be in that little reclining chair and it's like motorized. So I'd be like, nee, to like check her. And I'd be like, okay, she's alive. And then I go, nee, to go back down. And then she'd make another noise and I'd be like, nee. and then I'd be like, okay, she's okay. I literally went back and forth in that stupid reclining <laughs> chair for like 12 hours straight to check on this baby because I didn't like know the noises. <laughs> Like, just imagine, I'm, like, doing the motions right now. I literally just went back and forth in that chair. And I was like, I am not reclining this chair anymore. And then she'd be, like, so silent. I'm like, okay, I'll just recline it. And then she'd be like, ah! and I'm like, oh, my God, she's dying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, <laughs> that first night, I just stayed up with her the whole night. So I didn't really know <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's the such a massive life change and just this thing that you have literally carried inside of you you know yeah. baby for nine months so i yeah. i totally get that like i don't think i'd be able to sleep either yeah <laughs> and sleep like a baby I don't even, if you sleep like a baby you're just slamming your arms around and making pterodactyl noises all the time you don't want to sleep like a baby trust me that phrase is crazy no. yeah that is that is true because i do feel like babies are crazy yes. when they sleep <laughs> okay so tell us now that Mia has been here for three months, right? Three full months, I think. What has your current day-to-day look like with baby Mia? Um, let's see. So current day-to-day. Okay. So like the first, schedule. Like, yeah. Kind of what you guys do. Yeah. Um, the first four weeks, I feel like you just don't even know what's going on. You're just trying to like figure out how to sleep. Like you can't really schedule a time with anything or know what's, you know, when she's going to fall asleep. It's just, I mean, they're a newborn. They have no idea what's going on. You're still kind of getting the hang of things. So the first four weeks are just kind of like chaos, but like when I say chaos, I just mean like time wise, but like, it's actually like a very peaceful, very relaxing. Like I always thought, you know, those first few moments with like a baby bringing them home would really would truly be like what you imagine chaos, just like screaming and like poop everywhere or whatever. And, and just like, oh, what do we do? But it's like so relaxing and so peaceful and just like, I don't know, just like a really beautiful, like slow pace. Like it's just really, really nice. Like I really, really enjoyed it, even though I, I was like, I don't know what time of day it is, like what's going on. I'm just like so happy. Like it's just it's just really a really nice like little season. Um, yeah. But now, like now that she's a little older, we've kind of like figured out a little bit more of a schedule. Um, So now she's. Basically, I follow like wake windows for her. You guys, if you're having a baby, this is like a game changer, by the way. Just follow like wake windows, like how how long they're awake for. And so Mia's awake for like an hour 30, an hour 45 minutes at a time. And then it's pretty much time for a little nap. Um, so she sleeps right now between like five to eight hours at a time um, at night. So we'll put her to bed around 6.30 or 7-ish. And then she'll sleep I don't know, like five to eight hours. I'll wake up, feed her in the middle of the night. And then, so I feed her like once or twice in the middle of the night. And mm-hmm. then she wakes up in the morning around like seven ish. So it could be like anywhere from like 6 30 to like eight, but typically around seven, um, depending on how big of a day she's had. She might want to sleep a little longer, but yeah. <laughs> right around seven, if I keep her out too late, <laughs> um, right around seven. So our day starts around seven and I'll feed her. And then the mornings, Alex makes coffee and breakfast and I just play with her and we just have the mornings are so fun with her. She's just like such a little ball of sunshine. She's like wakes up smiling. It's so cute. Um, so we spend like, that's like her best 
like most alert and most awake time. So we just like have like so much fun playing with her and just having like a really easy morning. Um, and she has like her first first nap about an hour and a half after that. So like 9.30 ish, depending on when she yeah, woke that's up. That's so crazy. They're up for so little bit of time. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, when they're newborn, sometimes they're up for like three hours. Like you just, you don't know. You but now know, that I figured yeah. this out, like it just is such like a nice little, it keeps her happy. Cause like with babies, if they get too tired, they get like really mad. Yeah. They won't sleep. It's like so ridiculous. You're like, why won't you sleep? But if you, <laughs> when I started following like wake windows and just like understanding how long she liked to be awake, then I was just able to like plan to like set her up for success for like having a nap. And like, they won't be like, look at you and be like, I'm tired. It's just like, I know like, okay, I can tell by her sounds now or like the way she's like moving her body. I'm like, she's ready to like go down. It's just weird. You just figure it out. Like it's so intuitive and it's bananas, but you really figure it out. So, um, so yeah, basically every hour and a half to every two hours, I'm putting her down for like a nap and her naps are like 25 minutes long. Like she's, She's a quick napper. We don't got time for long naps. <laughs> like, okay. So it's like a really quick nap. Um, and then in the afternoons, I typically wear her in my little baby wrap thing, which you guys have probably seen on Instagram stories a ton. And she'll nap for like an hour and a half to two hours. So she has like a nice, nice long nap in um, the afternoon, typically going to walk with her in mid morning. Um, and then in between stuff, I'm just like, I don't know, like answering emails, doing small stuff for my business. Like while she's playing, I'll, like I did designed like, I don't know, three or four new cards um, just when I thought of an idea and like Mia would just be playing with me while playing next to me while I'd be doing stuff. So there's not really like a schedule of the day, which as you guys know, I'm not good at that. But there is kind of like a flow to the day, like a little like mm-hmm. up and down flow of how things work. And it's just it just is much better if you put your baby's needs before yours because it just makes it a lot easier with the day. Like one thing I realized is like if I'm like, oh, I have to do this thing now, like I have to do it now. Like that's just not good. Like Mia has to come first because if you don't set her up for success the rest of the day, it's just going to like ruin your life. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Especially um, at this age. Yeah. So I just became learned to be really flexible and being like, okay, well I need to do some, this one thing today. And I can't be like, oh, I need to do this at three o'clock or whatever. It's just like sometime today I need to do this. And like mm-hmm. Mia is always going to come first. And I just have to be like, okay, like I think there's like a tendency where you could get really frustrated if you were just like, oh, I wanted to finish this thing and now I can't. But for me, I just like, I don't know. It was very easy to take a step back. I mean, like Mia comes first before me and like you really have to become very selfless as a mother. And it does, it sounds scary, but it's actually like, I don't know. It's like really, really cool. <laughs> I don't know. Aww. Like I, I, I like really love it. And um, knowing that I, I always will put her first and, and it doesn't feel like I'm missing anything. It's just like, okay, well, I don't know. It's kind of like she is and if like there was a conversation, like this is like an analogy here. She's like the loud voice of the conversation and like my voice becomes more like a whisper, but I'm like the one propping her up to like give her that co- that loud voice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. So like giving her that like pedestal to stand on where she can like be the best. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, you guys. But anyway, like figuring that out where I could just be like, oh, I'll just do this at another time. It's not a big deal. It was like really big game changer for me um, with our schedule. And let's see. So she goes to bed around 6.30 or 7, just depending on like that last nap of the day. It just kind of changes. Like I said, we're not like bedtime's always at 6.30 or whatever. It's just truly whenever she woke up from that last nap, basically an hour and a half to two hours after that, we'll go to bed. So we'll do like our little bath time routine and, you know, read a book, do a little bottle, get her in a little sleep sack all ready for the night. (laughs) And like she knows it's coming too because – she like loves the bath, and then as soon as I like start like you know putting out the pajamas, she like looks at them, and she's like, you can tell she's like so mad. She's like, I'm not ready to go to bed yet. And then I just like cuddle her, and she's like, okay, I am really tired actually. Like, she has so much FOMO, like she hates missing out on stuff. <laughs> like that baby <laughs> loves being a part of the action. It's so cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, bedtime is like my favorite time of the day, not because she's going to bed, just because I like love that little moment with her. It's just like really sweet. But I'm also like the crazy mom. Like as soon as she takes a nap, I'm like, dang it, she's sleeping. And then she wakes up I'm like, yay, she's awake. And everyone's like, what is wrong with you? But like, I love being with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's special. We, we have a you lot of You only get this like once with your baby. Yeah. You only get it once. Yeah. So in the evening is when like me and Alex have our, our time together and we make dinner and and whatnot. So we typically do the bedtime routine together. Like he'll give her the bottle at night. Like I, we do the bath together and then he'll give her the bottle so that she can have like that time with her to bond with like feeding since I'm like breastfeeding her most of the time. 
And then we kind of like tag team on who's putting her down for the night because there's like one thing you got to learn, you got putting down a baby is like setting down a bomb. So you got to like really figure out <laughs> how to do it the most gentle way possible. Uh, I have like, I have a seamless process down now. It's fantastic. It works every time. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> took me a long time to figure that out. Like it took me three months to figure it out. So. <laughs> is it like specifically like the way you set her down? Yeah. The way you move you when you do, do like, it? Like I'm it's curious. Like, Elizabeth, it's like a dance. Okay. Like I pick her up <laughs> with like no motion at all. <laughs> it's just my legs. My legs are so sore because I like do this like special squat. And then you pick up, you like levitate off the ground and then you gently rock her and you count to 15 <laughs> and then you pull her away from your body and you count to 20 and you rock her and then you move your hand just ever so slightly to the left. <laughs> so it's not all the way behind her. And then you hover over the crib for another 15 seconds. If you do less than 15 seconds, you're going to have a bad time. And then you just bring her down with her little booty first. You want to make sure the booty touches first. Her head touches first. She's going to think she's falling backwards and she'll wake up. <laughs> so, <laughs> your little booty. And then you slide your right hand out. And then you have your other hand. You kind of turn to the side and you hold her like in a little sandwich pose with both hands. So she thinks she's still being held. And then you gradually bring her down. Bring out the other hand. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. <laughs> oh and then gosh. you just sit there for like 10 more seconds. And then she relaxes. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I love it. Things that it, you as parents go to, the extremes to make it sure. It really is. Like, I, pro- I promise you, if you're like, oh, Miss Jill, she's so dead asleep. I'm just going to set her down. She will literally wake up and look at you and be like, are we playing now? And you're like, crap. <laughs> oh, so. And Mia. all those skills, you just hold her for like 10 more minutes. That's fine. Then you get to One of my favorite anymore. things that I've learned about Mia is that she always cries at a stoplight if you guys oh, are in yes. the car. Like she you has, cannot the car stop has to be light. moving. Yes. <laughs> Do not stop at a red light. Whatever. We better, we're going to run all the red lights. <laughs> like Literally. Cammie has called me through her like car, the Bluetooth thing. And <laughs> she'll be like, oh, we're at a red light. And baby Mia will be in the background, like not happy about it. So you get like five seconds and she's like, eh? and I'm like, oh, crap, oh, crap, turn green, turn green. And then she's like, yeah! like she gets so mad. <laughs> and then as soon as you start going again, it's like pure silence. I'm like, what the heck? Like you just cannot to stop moving like that is so crazy too about babies they literally love to be moving all the time oh, yeah i didn't realize that i would say that she's very much yours and alex's kid though in that yeah. regard because you guys also don't really like to stop moving we don't very stand much. Still. yeah exactly <laughs> like you have to be moving like if you just like we're like i'm just gonna sit on the couch with her like and relax like no you better be walking around you gotta look at stuff you gotta bounce her all the time like she loves it oh my goodness it's so funny i didn't realize that about babies though like they like to be moved like I bought this super cute bassinet for our, our bedroom that she slept in. It's like a little Moses basket, you guys. It's so cute. And it's like on this little stand and they had like a stationary stand, stationary with an A, mind you, or like the rocking one. And I was like, well, what, why would I want the rocking one? And what does she like, you know, moves, wakes herself up. But I'm so glad I got the rocking one because all you got to do is just rock that baby as hard as possible and she'll go back to sleep. But if she was still like, oh my Lord. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't realize that. So, I've done like a lot of babysitting throughout my life, and like friends who have had kids and everything. And my sister in law had one of those snoo baskets, which kind of like wiggles, you oh, know, yeah, a little move, like back yeah. and forth. Well, I accidentally like <laughs> somehow turned it on like high once, and of course, like immediately turned it off. But the baby was like, wow, 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 wow. And I was like, oh, oh my god, that Mia loves that. <laughs> like, I don't have a snoo, but I have that little. Um, it's like the Mamaru and it looks like a little, I don't know, just like a little pouch that they're in and it just like bounces and does all these little things like motorized. And there's like one, two, three, four, five, like setting wise. Like I have to put it on like five where she's just like, <laughs> like going to like, like Kelsey Kelly got us that by the way. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, <laughs> I know Mia loves it. Like you have to put it on the highest speed though. And then it's fine. But like, yeah. She's moving over there and she like loves that. So what are you guys <laughs> using for your like baby monitor system right now? Um, we had something that was through our phones and then we got rid of that because I didn't like it. And then we have a thing called the Eufy. Yuffie, uh, E-U-F-Y. And that's what you're currently still using? Yeah, that's what we use right now. Um, and you yeah, like that not, one? Yeah, I like that one a lot. It's not like the Wi-Fi one where people can talk to it and stuff. Like, because I freaking... Yeah, them. that's <laughs> what I feel like I... I saw your story not. about that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's like one of my biggest fears. I had heard some of that stuff before. And so I feel... I, I'm glad that you have a recommendation that's not Wi-Fi based because I would probably want to do 
something similar. Like, yes. Guys, I'm not pregnant, but in the future, <laughs> something like similar that would be like that, that would just be like a classic baby monitor connection. Yeah. We actually Wi-Fi. just just got that because before I was using um, my sister-in-law's old one that was like, I mean, it's pretty, it's like seven years old, seven or eight years old. Cause I was like, I just need something or I don't even like, I don't even need the video. I just need to be able to hear her. Um, honestly, yeah. um, like I could use one of the like old school ones and be fine. And this one like was really crappy and had like the worst video, but I was like, that's fine. I just need to be able to hear her because she slept in our room for, we just moved her to the crib a week ago, basically um, at this point at three months, exactly. We moved her to the crib. And so now I have like our little monitor, the, the Eufy one or whatever. Cause I was like, I feel like I need something, but honestly I would be able to hear her crying if that baby was in another state. So like, you're just yeah. like so in tune with so the layout of your house too. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so then we would just be able to like, when she would, we were like, when we put her in our room at like six 30 or whatever, and then be making dinner then we could at least like hear what's going on. Um, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so next question. Tell us a favorite moment, which you've told us a lot of favorite moments, and maybe hard or sad moment, which I have what I'm thinking of because it's also kind of funny. Oh, uh, <laughs> what are you thinking of? <laughs> and what you're looking forward to most with her as she grows. Um, the hard, sad moment, which is also the funny moment, was like you when Jersey when Jersey, Jersey Jim, Jim was driving home and you guys were in the back of the car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like we went to. <laughs> yeah, the hard moment. It, pretty much any hard moment is when Mia does this little cry where her chin quivers and it just wrecks me. It wrecks my soul. <gasps> oh, I can God. picture it. Oh, God. It's the worst, you guys. She's only done this cry like probably like five times in her whole life. And I can say that because I have literally been side by side with her her entire life. So <laughs> probably five <laughs> times. So like one of them was probably like a couple days after she was first home. And I like had a mom with her by myself because I was like, I just want to be alone. Like my parents – we're like doing something and Alex was like, I'm going to go to the gym. Are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm like looking forward to having like a moment by myself with her. And she like panicked and I didn't really know what was going on because I didn't know how to be a mom yet because it was just a few days after and I was just walking around topless and crying with her and she was crying because I was like, I'm going to do skin to skin. <laughs> and then my parents Aww. showed up and the garage opened and I just like screaming, get out because my boobs are flopping everywhere. Anyway, that's <laughs> and she was crying. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, I'm trying to figure this out on my own. Everyone get out. But it was fine. <laughs> so she had a little cry there. And really, she was just gassy, you guys. I didn't know. I didn't know. Now I know. Um, and then when – so Alex just did a triathlon recently. And we have her, like, on a great little bedtime thing when she goes to sleep. Great. Like, I'm really proud of her. She's a great little sleeper. And I was, like, really scared to keep her out past her bedtime. Um, but I was, like, we're going to follow the wake windows. It's going to be fine. Um, but she – at the triathlon, the triathlon was at 6.15 at night. Like, oh. Who does it? Anyway, um, so it was like super windy over there and she kept getting distracted. So she wouldn't like eat or nurse. So I was like, crap, she's going to be so hungry on the way home. Like I got her to take a nap. But I was like, she's going to be hungry because she's like so distracted looking around. Um, so many things going on. The wind is blowing in her face. And the way home, on the way home, I was like, this is going to be, this is not going to be good. And I, Alex had his dad drive me there and drive us back because he was worried about me by myself. And I was like, I'm really okay. But anyway, so we call him Jersey Jim. So Jersey Jim was chauffeuring me and Mia there and us back and on the way back I just knew she was gonna have a bad time I was trying to like nurse her in the car and I was like let's just let's just go like let's just get her this girl home like she's so tired like her little eyes are red and she just started crying and she started doing the chin thing and then I started crying and Jersey Jim's up there and he's got two girls just crying in the back seat. he probably was like what is going on I was like I'm so sorry she never cries like this it just gets me all upset because I can just like it's like I'm not I'm crying because like it just like pains me to see her crying. And like, You're I know it's like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, oh, it just like, you feel her pain. You're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to cry with you. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just bizarre. So <laughs> and oh, she, we got home and she was like, totally fine. But I was like, this poor sweet girl, <laughs> like, she didn't know what was going on. But yeah, I was a hot mess. When she does the chin quivering, it just, and the one little single tear, you guys, it just got me good. It got me real good. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So that was a hard moment. Um, yeah, anytime. Yeah, and then yeah. the other ones were, um, I mean, you can tell more hard moments if you want, but I also wanted like a favorite moment and what you're looking forward to most. Oh, yes. Okay, favorite moment. Oh, gosh. Um, oh, man, I don't know. Like, they're all my favorite moments. Probably like when she first starts like started to smile at us. Um, I just think that's like the sweet, like anytime. And now – 
it's so cute, Liz. But now when I say smile, she smiles every time. Like she knows what that word means. And it's what? like freaking so we I'm literally I've been testing it. Like every time I pull up my phone, I go, smile. And she'll just do like this big little grin. And it's so sweet. So that's one of my favorite moments. Um, one of my favorite moments too is like I think what's really cool is like when you finally get to like you prepped all this baby stuff for your baby, like you bought all these things. And then, like, getting to, like, use it with them, you just feel like you're like, I bought this for you, and now you're using it. I don't know. It's just, it's just like, really cool. So the first time she started, like, playing on her little, like, play gym thing, I was, like, making coffee or something, and she was, like, laying down on her little play mat. And I heard, like, the little little dangly things hanging down, like, start, like, cr- like wiggling, you know? I could see them moving. I could see her, like, swatting it. And, like, that was just, like, one of my favorite moments. I was like, I got this for you, and you're using it. You're playing. Like, you're learning how to play. It was just, like... I don't know. It was just a really sweet moment. Like, and I wasn't like next to her. I don't know. Just like watching her play is just really, really sweet. And her just figuring out things, um, you know, and my favorite moments too, where we always take her out to have um, coffee and just taking her with us. Like, we're so proud to show her off. And when you have a baby, everyone stops and talks to you, but we're just like so proud of her, so proud of her. So it's not like a big deal. Just taking her with you everywhere. Like I just, I, I love having her with us. It really does like make everything a lot more fun. She makes everything more fun. Just like my business motto says, like, yes, things are, you know, a little more difficult because you have to like bring like an entire convoy of stuff with you. <laughs> you really don't need that much stuff. But I'm always like, what if she crops her pants? What if I crop my pants? What if she crops her pants? And I crop my pants twice. Like, I don't know. So yes. <laughs> oh, not that I'm going to crop my pants, you guys. <laughs> but, um, so it's just, it's just fun to get like to re-experience all kinds of things. Like I love taking her on walks. I look forward to that time with her every single day because she loves to look around and I just, we have a little girl talk or little girl chats, but yeah. And then my very favorite moment is just like in the very beginning of the day when she like first wakes up and she's just so smiling. She just looks at both of us with this huge grin and she's like, you guys are still here. Oh my gosh. Like so excited. Oh, another favorite moment. Sorry. I really do look forward to like our middle of the night nursing because it's just like, you know, the whole world is so quiet and it's just like the two of you. And it's just like this really special, sweet, like mother daughter moment. Um, and I know like those days oh crap, are super limited. I'm going to cry. And um, it's just, I don't know, it's just really special. And you're like, this is like the most natural, most beautiful thing. And I'm like, so thankful that I get to have this time with her. And like, I don't know, she's just so sweet and sleepy and she just wants her mama. And it's just, it's just amazing. I just like, I love that moment so much. And it's really sweet too, because sometimes I'll like answer DMs or something at like three in the morning. And some of you guys will like respond back and you're like, are you doing a nursing too? Like, yep. <laughs> and it's just so fun. There's like a little secret like club of mamas up in the middle of the night. I don't know. It's just like, it's just really cool. You just like feel this like special camaraderie and like even seeing moms like walking down the street with their baby you have like this special like knowing little look you always give each other like this smile like you just understand everything it just feels like the veil has been lifted and you're just like part of this like really special um this really special thing that is just the best I just I love it I love being a mom I love my daughter like it's just really cool (laughs) yeah it's so special and you've just approached this season of life which is so much joy which is really inspiring to watch and I think that's how you approach everything in life (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Um, so it's like been really exciting and really sweet and yeah I love all the I love all the baby Mia spam um okay so can we expect baby products in the future from Cami Monet Yes. yes you can I'm working on some stuff Right now, um, everything takes me like 10 times longer, <laughs> but it's time. <laughs> we got one a day in May coming up to you guys. I don't know when this episode's coming up, but if you're doing one a day in May, I'm still doing it this year. Um, so yeah, some baby products will be hopefully coming out from that. Definitely have some ideas. I don't want to share them yet because what if you guys steal them? Just kidding. But I don't want to share them yet. No, don't share yeah. them yet. Don't give <laughs> don't it away. This will come out May 10th. So people will okay. still have plenty of time to jump Perfect. on the one May, one a day in May train, which like Cami heads up and we kind of sort of encourage people through Biz Birthday Bash, but Cami like mainly heads it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lunatic basically. So join in if you can. Definitely some baby products coming. Just things where I'm like, oh, I would love to have this. Like now that I've seen what, you know, being a mom is like or things that are more special. And I know I'm going to like lose my mind over Mia's birthday party. So I'm sure like collections will come from that. So it's just, it's just all very exciting. Like I'm just, I don't know, like I was afraid that having a baby would like, you know, I don't know, deter you from your business, but it it really doesn't. Like the only thing is like, I really can't like focus anymore. (laughs) I'm just like consumed with her, like in the best way possible. And like 
so happy and so excited. Like before I was like, you know, a squirrel on crack and now I'm like a squirrel, like on like 10 amounts of crack. And it's like, if I don't have a list to like function, I just can't, but there's definitely going to be baby products coming as soon as I just kind of like put all those pieces together. Um, Mia is such like an inspiration to me and I just, I just love it so much. (laughs) Oh, it's so sweet. Well, this episode has been awesome because I think it allows people to peep behind the curtain a little more to know like the depth of what's going on when social media can be like really happy and joyous. And it's, I feel like honored that you really shared your first time publicly sharing your birth story was like here with me. Um, So that's like really touching and thank you for opening up about all of it. I think people are really, really going to like listening and hearing how much you love being a mom. Yes. Okay. I hope you guys love it. I, and you guys, seriously, if you're ever thinking about becoming a mom, you should do, do it. It's you're, you're just going to love it. Like I just can't explain to you how, how great and how amazing it is. It really is like just the greatest joy of my life. Like I thought I loved my business, but I would literally like blow it all up if I could like have Mia again. Like I just, I'm just so Aww. happy. <laughs> I, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, you, I mean, like- your, your priorities completely <laughs> change. Like, and people say the same thing with like, I mean, you still show your cats a lot, which I love, but some people, yes. it's like their pets fall off the face of the earth when they have a kid, you know, yeah. like things just change. <laughs> or like one of my friends who was like so passionate about like animals, like once she started having her kids, it was like everything just like switched gears, you know, like yeah. it just happens. I feel like it's science. It's biology. <laughs> yeah, it it is. And it's just, I don't know, like. I don't know. Like I loved the person. Well, I'm not, I don't want to sound vain, but I like I loved who I was before. But like, and sometimes you're like, oh, I miss that past version of myself because you really do change. But like, I love who I'm becoming, and I really do feel like so confident and like so much more sure of who I am and like who I'm supposed to be. And I just, I just feel, I, I don't know. I feel like so strong and just like so empowered. Like being a, a mom, like it's just you have so much confidence. Like you're just like ready to take on the world. And I just, like, I love that feeling. Like I feel like Wonder Woman. <laughs> Like I, you just feel so proud of yourself. And, you know, when your baby does something new, you're, you're proud of yourself. You're proud of her. It's just like, it's just an amazing feeling to have this like responsibility for something that you just have like so much weight for, like that weight of responsibility. But it's like such a beautiful, beautiful purpose. And I truly just like, I don't know, I, I can't imagine it being any better. Like I thought it would just be like, oh, I have a baby, whatever. It's great. But like, I love it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and seeing Alex be a dad, oh my Lord, have mercy. Like, let me just tell you, <laughs> that is a yes. whole other level of love. It's just amazing. <laughs> seeing, yeah, seeing pictures with him too is so special because like Mia is kind of Alex's little mini me. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For and I can't sure. wait to see her grow more. Um, yeah. There were a couple other questions we didn't get to, but that's okay because okay. we're going to do a maternity episode where those will kind of like factor in probably a little more with like business structure and how business has changed because we, yeah. we can include the fourth trimester in that episode, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, for sure. Okay, yeah, we can talk more about here? those practical tips and all those things. But yeah, this is all just about me just, you know, rambling on about my baby. So yeah, <laughs> Thanks, guys. And, and the perfect way to like ease back in because obviously it has been like literally three full months at least, I think, since we had sat down to to record something yes. last so oh my gosh i know time crazy. flies time flies and time back. means nothing <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> all right guys we love you so much all of you know the drill please screenshot and tag us if you're listening to let us know how much you've loved this episode leave a rating and review on itunes and submit any questions you have through the q and cake section of our website you can just go to the footer of bizbirthdaybash.com and click on the q and cake button in the footer and you can drop your questions there but that is pretty much it for today there still might like funnily enough i can't remember Oh, no, at this point, at this point, I don't think we're going to have any more episodes that pop up with um, Holly in them. I wasn't sure because of like the order we've recorded everything. So at this Uh point, going forward, you guys still might hear some episodes with me doing um, one on one like guest interviews because I took a ton of those while Cammy was on maternity leave. But otherwise, like Cammy will be back. We're getting down to it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yes so yes um, yeah you guys this was so fun thanks for letting me like rant, like share all my stuff and ramble and if you're not interested in kids i'm sorry this wasn't the episode for you but you know it was fun to like tell you guys all the things and if you are um you know if you have questions you can always send me a dm because I, I love to chat about like pregnancy and birth stuff and recommendations like so feel free to message me <laughs> yes all right everybody we love you all talk to you next week 
Love you guys. Bye. Hey guys, we just wanted to hop in and talk about one of our amazing resources, the A to Z directory. All of us have thought at some point, how did she do that or how did she make that? And maybe you don't know where to start or how the heck to produce this amazing product you've dreamt up. Well, the A to Z directory is the missing puzzle piece in your biz, you guys, seriously. So it's built in the form of a yearly membership and it's your one-stop shop for finding suppliers and vendors for all the things. Literally where to print everything from custom invitations, greeting cards, mugs, koozies, acrylic printing, letterpress, custom ribbon. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it literally goes from A to Z. From acrylic printers to zipper pouches, we have it in the A to Z directory. We want to help all of you search less and create more with this list of 300 plus vendors and suppliers. Don't worry, they're very organized. It's not going to be overwhelming and confusing when you join. And this membership also includes access to a private Facebook community. It's incredibly active and involved. And if you need a question answered fast, that is definitely the place to go. Yeah, our Facebook group really is the best. You guys, everyone is so helpful in there, and we're in there too, um, answering questions you guys might have. So it's a great way to get access to us and ask us things without sliding into our DMs. So we're more likely to answer you in the Facebook group, just saying. Anyway, <laughs> also in the Facebook group, this is new for 2020, and we're really excited about it. We are hosting monthly power hour Q&A sessions that are live, and these are only available to our A to Z directory members. So you can hop in with us live and ask us all your burning questions in real time and just hang out with us every month. And we do these at different times so you can actually be there live and the replays are always available in the Facebook group for members. This resource is priced at $147 a year, which honestly is extremely affordable and it's full of so many benefits, such as exclusive vendor coupons for members only. And we would love to have you guys join. Seriously, it's kind of like our family and our tribe. So visit bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash directory to sign up today and use coupon code podcast2020 to receive $20 off your first year. That's podcast, all caps, 2020 for $20 off your first year. We can't wait to see you in the Facebook group.